A common question that comes across every petrol head's mind is when should I change the engine oil? Most of us will follow a kilometer based maintenance calendar where we will do an oil change at a certain kilometer interval. But what about the time interval? As many manufacturers condition oil changes at a certain kilometer or time interval with regulation of whichever comes first. So what should you do if you have a low running machine? Going by most of the manufacturers recommendation, if they have a good synthetic based oil, then they will usually suggest oil change once in a year irrespective of the mileage done. The same annual oil change recommendation will be given by most engine oil manufacturers as well. So is this a kind of money extraction ploy run by the syndicates of vehicle and oil manufacturers? Well, you won't get any spicy answers on this channel, but definitely a lab test analysis on a 2 year old engine oil that was doing its duty inside a low running engine. But before we start the lab test analysis, I need to discuss the yearly oil change thing as I have got some chemistry to back me up on this. Even if we consider a low running vehicle, we cannot escape the fact that the oil will be in the presence of oxygen and heat for a long time. Oxidation is one of the biggest nightmare for an engine oil where it has to deal with every startup and run where it is pumped across the engine. This is further agitated by the heat cycle that the oil goes through. Finally, time will make a decaying effect in the presence of all these factors. Your base oil will eventually break down. The additive formulation will fight, fade and deplete as engine is a harsh place to be employed in. So will your engine start to damage on the 366th day? Well, no, as engine oil change comes under the preventive maintenance, considering the fact that you're using a good engine oil. Delaying this can result in long term complications due to the inefficient performance of the engine oil. The subject in our case was the 1.2 Wagonar that had hardly done 5000 km in the two years of COVID and the oil used was Shell Helix HX8. The oil performed well, we already have a HX8 review on the channel so I won't repeat the same over here. But as it approached the second summer, the engine used to get rough and there was a clear sign of knocking as we took it to higher RPM. So after almost two years of patience, we finally got the sample for lab test. This time the interesting part is going to be the viscosity, where the fresh oil comes with the kinematic viscosity of 71.69 mm2 per second at 40 degrees Celsius. And after two years and close to 5000 km, it dropped to 54.56 mm2 per second at 40 degrees Celsius, which is a significant drop. While the kinematic viscosity at 100 degrees Celsius dropped from 11.93 mm2 per second to 9.745 mm2 per second, which is still in the safe zone for a 5W30 grade engine oil. If we want to express this in layman's term, then we have to say that the oil has become thinner. The aging can be noticed in the flash point as well, where it has dropped from 240 degrees Celsius to 180 degrees Celsius. This also intrigues me to do the elemental analysis as we can know about the wear and tear. We will begin this with iron. Iron showed just 21.1 parts per million, which is good. Aluminium came out at 10.1 parts per million, which is again on the healthy side. The same was seen with chromium and lead that showed negligible presence. But copper came out at 198.4 parts per million, which has exceeded the initial threshold. Being on the softer side, there is always some additional presence of copper, but this is greater than that. This is not coming from the coolant side, but could be a part of the additive, or we can suspect the copper from the bearings, bushes, rocker arms, or gaskets, where copper and its alloy find a major application. Moving ahead to the contaminants, we have nothing much to worry over here, as silicon stands at 21.1 parts per million, which is okay, sodium at 5.1 parts per million, while potassium at 0.5 parts per million. Finally, we have the additive elements that decide the lubricant's behavior. We will start this off with the cleaning agents, where calcium came out at 1416.3 parts per million, which may seem to be low for some of you. But don't be disappointed, as Shell has balanced that with magnesium at 918.1 parts per million. Again, one of the few modern engine oils that we found is doing this with their formulations. The anti-wear and anti-corrosion department is handled by zinc and boron. Zinc comes with a decent dose of 873.1 parts per million, while boron is good at 87.6 parts per million. Phosphorus, which is a part of extreme pressure additives, stands at 735.9 parts per million, which is nothing exceptional but is in line with most of the engine oils in this segment. Molybdenum needs a special mention here with 158.3 parts per million, which acts as a friction modifier. This also reminds me of the Petronas Synthium 3000 lab test, let me know if you remember that video. So let's conclude this video from where we started on the topic of oil change. Now this is coming from me and other expert friends of mine 
where we need to understand that the engine oil in a sealed bottle can have years of shelf life. But life inside this sump is limited to the condition of use, environment and of course time which can limit the oil's performance and protection factor, where you might see wear, corrosion, sludge and other complications in the long term. I will bring in the preventive maintenance part again, where you can stretch your oil drain intervals in kilometers and months, but just don't escape from acknowledging the importance of preventive maintenance. So that's it for this video and I hope you guys have liked it.